I will come back for you too. Well, just you. Just wait. We got so much rain this spring, which has been fantastic, but in some ways it seemed to slow things down because things weren't getting enough sun. Right now, the Jill pieweed is taking off and it looks fabulous. I love this. and. I'm really happy with this area right here because there's the peonies back here, which have, make a nice little hedge in the springtime. And then just about the time that they're finishing, the Joe pieweed starts growing up. Um, so we have these nice layers. This coneflower is everywhere. I'm actually at the point where I'm ripping it out in some places. The purple coneflower, however, is very welcome. The hydrangeas are blooming already, which is very early. I have some liatris, which I'm very excited about. I feel like I didn't get any last year. And I have some new additions out here, which are these massive terracotta pots that I put at either side of the sidewalk leading up to my house. They were on sale at Menards for like $17. So couldn't not get them. Um, around here, it seems like a lot of the stores where you can get plants, oh my gosh, Etta is screaming in the house. A lot of the stores where you can get plants are like clearing out by early July. So it's a great opportunity to find some good deals, especially on plants, because they want to get rid of them. You have some cardinal flower blooming, which I love. Here's some more about to come in. And I just got this cone flower and I've been very hesitant to get cultivars because I have heard that these uh, varieties that you know, look like the purple coneflower, but are different colors. I've heard that they tend to revert, um, but I did talk to a fellow master gardener the other day who had some like this, and she said they've been coming back uh, true for a couple years, so we're gonna give it a try. I added some black-eyed Susans out here, which I surprisingly don't have out front. Um, so I'm hoping those will spread and you can see I got more gate pieces. So now we have a complete fence in front, which will hopefully discourage people from letting their dogs poop in my garden. This is the false sunflower, I believe. And right here we've got some purple prairie clover that I got from one of the um, organic or native plant growers in our area and they set up at the farmer's market. So I always got to pick up a couple of wee things from them. The blue stem's coming in nicely. And this is the other new addition is some rattlesnake, rattlesnake master. Which I'm very excited about. More sunflower, milkweeds colonizing over here. 
which is some of the only colonizing we like. I haven't seen any monarchs yet, but keep checking for eggs and caterpillars. And, oh, I need to stake up this coneflower back there. My planters by the front door are looking very nice, very full. And managed to clean out the side. So it's not my, it's not so embarrassing now. There was, if you remember, there were blackberries all over here. Some buckthorn was growing up. And when my mom was here this past weekend, we got in here and whacked it all down. And there was more rain and a storm and my privacy fence here fell over. So I just replaced that. I think this is, this is another type of, maybe the, this is Maximilian sunflower. And that one's false sunflower. I don't know. This is Culver's root. And of course we have the bee balm, one of my favorites. This is looking very nice. If I can get the uh, front part to look this full, I will be very happy. This big hydrangea is blooming too. Look at these. This is usually late summer and it's the middle of July right now. How about it? And we will go back around. Maybe we'll go through the house so that Etta can come with us. Ooh, I can't walk straight to save my life. So not too many changes out here except for hardscaping, obviously. Ooh, the um, perennial ornamental onion is about to burst. These are divisions that I planted out here this spring. I'm happy they're doing well. So let's get a wider view from out here. I still need to do something with the tree bank here. We'll get there. So here is the front yard garden in the middle of July. Not too shabby. You wanna go? That's a problem for later. Okay, Etta, where are we starting? The backyard garden is really looking good. I'm actually going to start over here because I normally go the other way. Something I'm excited about right now, but I might move, is this. This is some sort of perennial sunflower, and I bought it on sale at the end of the season last year and had it in a pot over here, and then once it got cold, I just yanked it out of the pot and stuck it in the ground, and it's doing great, although I think I've finally figured out that this back up. So basically from about here over is in certain parts part shade and in the back mostly shade and I think that I've decided this part of the
garden should be mostly lighter colors, pinks, purples, whites. And so things like this yellow, I want to instead move over to this side, which is much more, you know, I put more tropical annuals there. I do much more of the deep colors um, and the warm tones. So yellow, hot pink, there's red, and um, so I want to move that flower over there. But it's just so happy here right now, so maybe I'll wait till fall or closer to the end of summer. But let's see what's happening. The climbing roses are doing their second growth spurt of the year. You can see it. there's two massive canes popped up here. This climbing rose has sent off lots of new branches. And so I'm waiting for this one to come into flower again, but this one has already started repeat flowering. There's one right here, which is when I touch it is going to just fall to pieces. Oh, it didn't. There it is. But this one smells great. This is the generous gardener. That's a David Austin rose. Ooh, here's another one coming in. Focus. Yeah, that's a pretty one. And this is an Echinops that was out in the front garden and never was happy. And now I've moved it here and it's doing much better. My white pine here is getting a little bit swamped, so I need to clear some things out around it. But I normally really struggle with this section because, as I pointed out on the last tour, there's this crab apple above, and it's really having a hard time. Um, and oftentimes it drops lots of dying leaves in this area and if they have rust and things on them that spreads to everything but fortunately I haven't noticed too much of that just yet. Here's another rosebud. Got some coneflower over here and the anise hyssop is huge. That self seeds everywhere. I believe this is just the the native one. It's not a cultivar. So it just reseeds itself very promiscuously. More cone flower. There's a peony I transplanted over here that I need to stake up a little bit better. But my new little hydrangea back there is doing great. And then this rose also has some new buds on it. Is there? No, I don't see any aphids or anything. You can see it's got some nice big new canes. They're all very out. They're all very strong and they look great. More milkweed. And this shady over area over here is very shady in the afternoon and it's just chilling right now. I did take some apples off of my apple tree, but as you can see, it's still very heavily weighed down and of course I've done nothing about it, so still need to prop that up. You can see my little mirrors. I really like that one. It's nice to have something for the morning glory to go around. Nothing much is new over here. Everything's very happy. I have more anise hyssop. This morning glory over here is of course tangling itself in the chicken netting and I'm never gonna get that out while it's alive. So we're just gonna accept it. But look at that. You can't tell on camera pop, probably, but these are just so vibrant in, as I'm looking at them with my eyeballs and not through the camera, they look way more purple and almost like, they almost seem to glow. 
They're just beautiful. This is the big, 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 big pasta that I moved and you can see it's gotten a little bit, pause for motorcycle. It's gotten a little bit sunburned, but it's doing okay. I think it's happy back here. The ladies are scratching around. Um, something new I got the other day is the snake root, which I am so excited about. I haven't planted them yet. Look at this. I am obsessed. I saw these and immediately grabbed them because I have been looking for these. The flower spikes are supposed to get close to five or six feet and I've been on the hunt for something like that for ages. You can see my money plant is finally drying out. I need to cut this back. Oh yeah, these are called black negligee. Woo. Spicy. Um, but this area is just looking great. It has loved all of the rain. And even though all the rain has meant a lot more insect damage, um, the plants are still very strong. So they've all withstood most of the insect damage. I've never seen so much, I th I'm assuming this is flea beetle, but I've never had my hostas munched up this much. So, you know, when you look up close, it's like, mm, not ideal. However, you can see the plant is perfectly healthy and they all seem to enjoy it back here. So, you know, either you don't have enough water and everything gets dehydrated and sad. You have a lot of water and you have a ton of bugs. It's just sort of how it goes. How about that elephant ear though? These are freaking huge. Look, that's my hand. I would say this is close to two feet long maybe. They're enormous. And they're just like so extra. So I'm gonna make sure I do that every year. Over here, you can see I left a mess in the, uh, I think we're calling this the veranda. Still in progress. Um, also here you can see I cannibalized this planter so that I could make one of the planters out front. Haven't dealt with that yet, it's fine. I am really loving this area, which if you have seen my previous videos, you know I reconfigured the shape of it so it's a little bit bigger than it was before, but I put this planter in the middle. Oh, there's my shadow. Get out of there. Uh, this planter in the middle with a canna and some coleus and some lantana and it just looks so good and you can see it's already had I think this is actually its second flower spike but there's um, another stalk coming up and that one too so we'll have more flowers before too long and I jammed a tomato plant back here because why not and then we have this sweet potato vine going up and I just can't get enough of it. I think it looks so good. Then I also have a moonflower vine here. Oh, there it goes. And I was worried when I planted it, the uh, tip sort of got nibbled by earwigs, but it's recovered. It's going strong and it's kind of cool. The Leaves look very similar to the sweet potato vine, um, but once those flowers start coming out, it'll be really cool. And of course over here we have my center bed. The 
I think this is hilarious. I've been watching this the last couple days, but this tree threw up this leader, I guess, and it's just get, been getting taller every day, and it's just one little skinny stick going up there, and I just think it's hilarious. You're a funny tree, but I just love the way the leaves move. As if on cue, thank you. And over here in this bed, the sedum is continuing to get ready to flower. Much like the hydrangea, this is way ahead of schedule this year. Same with the perennial ornamental onion, all very early. I finally got to the stage where I was able to cut back all of the catmint, so it's reblooming, looking nice and full. And I love all of the Larkspur that started to spread more in this area. I have never been able to grow delphinium, so this is as close as I'm gonna get. They're not as big, but they have those same beautiful purple-blue colors, and I just love them. These coneflowers are new to this bed this year. They're looking great. Some birds screaming over there. Oh, here's another. Nice. Um, this is a little quick fire hydrangea. So this one and the one we looked at over there are the same. And they kind of uh, both sent up these like one single weird tall branch. Again, I just think it's very funny but it's looking great and I really like these I think you call this a lace cap um, they just look so pretty like they're sort of old-fashioned looking I really love it and then we make our way over here moving into my fancy annuals, I guess you'd call them, such as my dahlias. And if you saw my last video, I was battling earwigs and I still have some for sure, but you know, I had actually multiple cafe au lait plants and this one has been relatively undamaged by the earwigs. The one over there, which we'll look at the flowers keep getting munched on and crapped on, but I've got an extra one, so that's okay. And we've got um, blueberry bushes are all finished now. I got a pretty decent blueberry harvest this year. This whole area is kind of new. If you have watched some of my other videos, you know there used to be a sidewalk going from this point on the patio all the way down here all the way right here. And I pried up all the pieces of concrete, filled in the uh, trench, and now it's grass and part of a flower bed. Ooh, a rose. Oh, that's beautiful. I really like this one. This is, I don't know what brand this is, but the climbing rose is called Above and Beyond. Oh, there's another one. Man, I didn't even see these. And yeah, we've got our dahlias in here. And then I put this, I think this is a brown cone flower in the middle. And I surrounded it some of, with some of my favorite perennials. So there's pensamen or beard tongue sedum, salvia, catmint, 
and then we'll go look at the other side. Oh, the cone flowers, obviously. So, even though I really try to focus on natives, I can't resist something fussy and fancy. Um, so to make sure I'm still taking care of the pollinators. As you can see, they're very happy. Hi, friends. Keep trying to spot if I have any rusty patch bumblebees. That might be one. That is our Minnesota native bee that is endangered. My containers are looking great. Those cannas are huge. Had tons of cherry tomatoes coming in, which is super fun. And I cut back the salvia, it's starting to rebloom. Catmint never stops, which is why I love it. Here we've got, oh my gosh, my shadow. Where do I go? Where's the sun, Eileen? There. This is Deborah Renee, and you can see there's still petals that are getting munched, but that's okay. I'm not gonna spray or anything. And then this one is Peach Fuzz, and I think those two look great together. They look great with the coneflowers. And those are both tubers that I saved from last year, and so is the Cafe Au Lait. And then on this side, more containers. I have my perennial lavender. Um, if you live in zone four or five and you have trouble with lavender um this is i believe an english lavender and i want to say this is the third or fourth year it's come back i am going to try and take some cuttings this year because my sister wants some lavender um but i do try to remember to mulch it before winter um and it's had some rougher years but it survived and I know a lot of people have trouble with lavender in cold climates so um, maybe just try a different variety if you're having trouble with it. Here we have more peach fuzz and then this one. Ooh, who are you? Marn. Oh, that's right. That one was huge last year but as you can see it's had some trouble and even though like this is when the earwig situation was the worst but there is new growth that's not getting munched as heavily and the flowers look okay and it's probably just that i crammed too much in here this year because last year this plant got enormous and it was my absolute favorite so hopefully it'll bounce back and get a little bit bigger we're not getting as many downpours, so the plants are finally getting some warmth. Pause for train. And we're back. That train took about 10 minutes. As I was mentioning, the earwig pressure seems to have abated a little bit. As you can see, there is new growth that is, that is not as badly chewed on but you can see the flowers are still getting eaten a little bit and that's the reason I'm leaving some of these flower heads on longer because my hope is that if there are earwigs attracted to this, they'll just stay there, keep eating this guy and then leave some of the newer buds alone. But this is how I can always tell it's earwigs is because they leave their teeny tiny little poops everywhere so it just looks like there's black speckles but it's earwig shit however despite all that this area is looking fabulous I love this hot pink bee balm and my banana I tried growing a banana last year I got one late in the season and stuck it in a pot and it grew huge in just a few weeks and so this year I found one for like $12 early in the year and it was probably 
two feet high and it's getting enormous and I just love it. It seems very over the top and extra and I'm here for it. So yeah, we have Cafe Au Lait. My baby love my favorite, probably my favorite Dahlia is Mai Tai. Any of my videos last year, I talked about this one a ton. And then when the earwigs were worse, this one was getting attacked the most. And I was really worried that it wouldn't recover. But as you can see, we have new growth and it seems to be intact thus far. The flowers look pretty good. And those next to my banana with the bee balm in the background just it looks very tropical and I just really love it. So this just goes to show that with the right colors and some planning, even in a Northern climate, you can have what appears to be a tropical looking garden. My, this is a cut leaf cone flower. I talked last time about how it gets so big and so I've been trying to keep it in check. There's another one right here next to the smoke bush, which I love, love, love. And those are starting to bloom. It's just another pretty basic coneflower type flower, but I believe this one is a native and it spreads like crazy. It's huge um, and great for our bee and butterfly friends. And then, oh, over here, yes. This is my ironweed and it looks like it's gonna flower soon. Early in the year, this was coming up and I had no idea what it was. And I think there's a few dotted over there as well. Um, this is something that I winter sowed last year. I got seeds from Flower Church and this is an American native plant although it the regions to which it is native are a little bit east of here um, more michigan ohio appalachia um, so this is sort of the maybe not technically an area it's native to but it is an american plant so um, i'm really excited to have something that gets tall and is a perennial and has a nice dark purple flower because a lot of the you know native perennials that get really huge are the cone flowers and those are mostly yellow the yarrow has been just nuts this year and my bronze fennel is oh it's flowering already look at that but yeah, the yarrow's been spreading like crazy, so I've been moving it around, cutting it back. And then on this side, got our tomatoes. Finally been harvesting some of those. And some of my newer dahlias that I didn't start as early are starting to get bigger. Oh, this basil needs to have its head removed. No flowering yet. And then we're back to where we started. The cloud has just come over the sun. Oh, and obviously I always want to give a pond update. You know, I love my pond. The goldfish pond. Uh, I finally got this bamboo roll that I had been waiting for forever because I ordered it online and didn't realize it was coming from overseas, and I regret that. Um, one, because I don't want to order stuff from super far away, and uh, two, because it took like two months to get here. But... Um, it's looking great. The goldfishes are happy. Friends, you hiding? Hi, guys. 
Brad and the fat, frat fish are very friendly. Um, so I have my water lilies in here. I've gotten one flower so far. I believe I need to pot up uh, most of these because they're still in the containers um, that I bought them in, which are like those drop, you just drop them in. So that's a project that needs to happen. I probably should have done it early this year, but whatever. This stuff is Amazonian frog bit and I ordered it for my aquariums inside. But these floating plants are great for pond and aquarium health because these roots just suck up tons of nutrients. And as you can see, I have put this out here. It has multiplied like crazy. So that helps keep the pond clean. And then I have some annual papyrus reed grass. And then a fellow master gardener gave me um, some of their pond plants that I stuck in here. Recently got a new hose, so the flow is better. My bog filter is still cranking away. I stuck some just plants in here so they can suck up the water. They love it. And then here I have my wee little guppy pond. Um, if you don't know anything about fish, guppies are tropical. And so... Oh man, another train. Hold, please. Well, after another 10 minute train, we're back. And I have no idea what I was talking about, except that it was something about the pond. Oh, guppies. So I do move my guppies, some of my guppies out here in the summer. Guppies are tropical fish. They need to be kept between temperatures of 60 and 72 degrees. And this time of year, even here in Minnesota, it is warm enough even into the overnights to keep them outside without a heater. So when I first bring them out here, when it's still questionable, I do have a little heater in here. And I will add one when the overnight temperatures begin dropping. But I will say this is the second year, second summer, I've had this batch of guppies out here. Many of them are now close to two years old, which is about the lifespan for guppies. As you can see, there are many teeny tiny babies in there. They have formed a nice little colony and they are perfectly happy out here. So I have the little straw thing in there that helps with some of the algae control. There is a solar powered pump that is pushing the water around a little bit it is a little bit cloudy, so I'm gonna do a clean out, but if you're thinking about doing a summer patio pond and you are able to move it indoors if need be, these are great little fish. Um, guppies are fun because they're very curious. And anytime there's something going on, they wanna see what's happening. Uh, so if you have kids, these are a fun project, but do be careful because if you aren't ready to have a million guppies, um, you got to make real sure that all of yours are the same sex because they multiply like rabbits. All right, that's fish corner, literal fish corner. Um, I think we're close to the end here. I got distracted per huge, but that's okay. One of the reasons we garden. Let's take a final look around here. This is the backyard garden in the middle of July.
Thank you for joining me today. I realized that I forgot to do my typical introduction at the beginning of the video, so we'll do it now. I'm Eileen, and I garden in southeastern Minnesota in zone 5A, what was formerly 4B, and depending even on where you are in this region, um, you could be 20 miles away from me and be in a different zone. So. Um, Southeastern Minnesota is fun that way. Just about every noisy thing that could happen is happening. I don't think I have anything else to say. I just wanted to look around, take you with me, give you an update on how July is going. It feels like one of the most beautiful and temperate Julys we've had in a long time. Oh, I'm still recording. Woof. Keep yourself and your plants hydrated. Happy gardening!